Hello and welcome. My name is Angela Davis and I'm the Florian Quilter. Today is part two of the Double Irish Chain Quilt. And as you can see, it is basted and ready to go for quilting. This video is going to show you, I left off with cutting strips and uh, putting, starting to put together block A and you'll see a little bit of that and then you're going to see how to put together block b and then how we arrange it on the wall and put it all together had a lot of fun making this quilt this quilt took approximately i would say two weekends to put together the double irish chain is a fast and easy quilt to do if you need a gift quickly and you only have a couple of weeks it's a great project to work on I don't think I'm going to put a border on it. I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. I really, really am pleased with how the colors came across the quilt. I'm really pleased with the background color. I like the green running through it. And I especially like that little bit of different texture of the green. All in all, I'm very, very pleased with it. So what I'd like to do now is just recap a little bit. The quilt is made up of two blocks, block A and block B. And what creates the pattern is block B has these four little squares in each corner and that creates the pattern. That creates the pattern that flows through the top of the quilt and creates the chain those four little squares in block B. There's three colors to this quilt. There's the green, which is the single chain. There's the pink, which is the double chain. Brown here represents the print or the background fabric. So we created block A first. And the reason why we did that is we needed this measurement right here that measurement right there from block A to determine what the cut was gonna be right here. Because everybody sews a little differently, one person might sew a little bit on the outside of their presser foot, one person might sew right on the edge, and one person might sew a little bit inside the presser foot, that measurement might be a little different for you. So I created all of block A first, took that measurement, and then that determined what size this measurement is. And then this strip right here in the middle is one big strip. So block B is one row, one large second row, and then a third row. And one and three are the same. Okay? There it is. Really, really enjoyed revisiting the double Irish chain. Haven't made a double Irish chain in a very long time. And I'm very happy and pleased with how it turned out. I want to do one more. I'll probably do that on my own and then maybe just sh show you uh, the end result when I'm finished. Hope you enjoy the video and you know what to do. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hope you enjoyed the video. It's time to cut two and a half inch strips from our strip set. So what I've done is I've layered two strip sets on top of one another, nesting those seams. In this way, I cut once, but I get two strips, as you can see here. And I'm cutting these sections in two and a half inch strips because that was my original size when I cut the individual strips. And I'm cutting all the way down that particular row. And as you can see here, I have, I've cut all my strip sets and I've laid out the piles according to the chart. So as you can see here, I have row one, two, three, four, five, and it matches the rows in my chart. 
I have everything lined up and prepared so that I can start sewing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew rows one and two together, get those two piles done. Then I'm going to sew rows three and four together, get that pile done, and then sew the fifth row on. And I'm just taking my time matching up those seams. And I'm making sure to take the pins out so that I don't stitch over the pins. And I'm using a little plastic stiletto to keep everything lined up. And I'm not pinning at every seam. I'm only pinning at maybe one or two seams just to make sure that everything is lined up. You can see it here. If you have one part of the strip that's a little bit wider than the strip above it, make sure that you lay that that piece down so that the feed dogs are against the strip that has a little bit more excess fabric and the feed dogs will ease that in. Now I'm sewing the sets together. I have rows one and two sets sewn together. I have rows three and four set sewn together, and then I have row five to attach. So this is the part of the sewing where I'm putting these three sections together to form the full block. And I'm just doing what I did previously. I'm pinning it one or two, maybe three different spots just to line up the seams, and I'm using my stiletto to make sure that everything stays straight as I feed everything under the feed dogs. Make sure to remove the pins before you get to the, the needle so that you don't accidentally break your needle. I've done that. So it just takes a couple seconds to remove that pin in advance. When I press block A, I just press all the seams in one direction to make it easy. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the center in block A. And that measurement will be my base measurement for the for the strips in block B. So I'm just going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's finished at six inches, which means I'm going to cut my main strip in block B at six and a half inches. So when I lay out my strips for block B, I have my two outside strips, which represent the four cornerstones, or rather, the represent the four connector blocks, and that center strip is cut at six and a half inches. And I'm just going to sew each of those pink strips on either side of the background piece. I'm going to go down one side, turn the strip over, and then go down the second side. And I turn the strip over so that the sewing is done in opposite directions and that helps prevent skewing. I press once to set the seams 
And then I'm pressing the strips so that the seam faces the strip and not the center. Just giving that a quick press. Now it's time to cut the strip set. But before I do that, I want to just double check to make sure that my width in my B block is the same width as in my A block. Just to double check myself before I begin cutting. And as you can see here, everything looks good. My measurements were accurate. For this strip set, I'm cutting these strips in two and a half inches. This strip set is for row one and three in block B. So this entire strip set is getting cut in two and a half inch strips. Now I'm putting those strips in a pile just to keep them organized. And I'm going to set them aside because now I'm going to cut my background fabric into six and a half inch wide strips. This is going to be row two for block B. And once I cut the strips, I'm going to subcut them at ten and a half inches because that's how wide the block is. Now I'm laying out block B, row one, row two, and row three, and I'm preparing them to sew. And now I'm sewing rows one and three to that center panel for block B. After sewing all my strips together for block B, I press and then I'm ready to lay out the blocks. And here it is on my design wall. And you can see here that block B has those four pink squares in the corners. Those are the connector blocks that help flow and travel the pattern and connect it across the top of the quilt. That's what creates the chain pattern are those four little connector squares in block B. After this, I'm going to sew the blocks in rows and then sew the rows together to complete the quilt top. What I've done is I've pinned at different intervals at certain intersections. I didn't pin at every intersection just enough to keep the row together. If I ended up with a seam that instead of them nesting, they're both going in the same direction, I did not, I did not repress it so that they would nest. I just left them both going in the same direction. The double Irish chain block is a very forgiving block. So if you have a seam that doesn't quite match or a seam where uh, there might be a tiny bit of a, of a little um, tuck there. It's a very forgiving block. So don't worry about ripping out a seam and redoing it because it's not perfect. Relax. Enjoy yourself. And I had to learn not to be so hard on myself with my quilting. And I find that I'm much more relaxed because there are certain patterns that are very forgiving. Those little mistakes, no one's gonna notice them. Just enjoy the process. 